Hi everybody, welcome back. Welcome new viewers. Today's video, we're not gonna be doing any sausage making or any kind of food prep, but there will be sausage related talk. So let's say we get right into it. Okay, so we're gonna talk about nitrates and nitrites and uh, how to properly use them, the use of curing salts and what it does. And we're actually gonna calculate, uh, we're gonna actually come up with a little simple formula so I can give you some examples of what you should be doing. And I'm sure I'm probably gonna get off topic, so please bear with me. The curing salts that we'll be talking about today is something like Cure Number One, Insta Cure Number One, uh, Prague Powder Number One, and then you have your Cure Number Two, Insta Cure Number Two, Prague Powder Number Two. These are all curing salts, and they have different applications that we're gonna uh, we're gonna show you inside this video. What do they do, you ask? Well, they help preserve our meat. Without some type of curing process, we would have spoilage. We would have bacteria growth. Uh, stuff like E. coli, salmonella, and botulism. These are major, major issues. They also help to preserve the color of our meats. Like the curing salts, they keep that nice pink look in them. That's some type of curing process. If we didn't have that, it would give us more of that, uh, that dull grayish look. Like, you know, if you're not using anything like an, uh, a fresh sausage or whatever, it would look like that. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. Uh, for sausage making, what we're going to talk about right now is uh, cure number one, for example. Uh, what cure number one, it contains nitrites. Nitrites is NO2, and uh, what this does, the nitrites, it converts into microbiologically into a gas known as nitric oxide. And nitric oxide, NO, that gas bonds to the protein's myoglobin. If you're not familiar with what myoglobin is, it's a protein found in muscle cells of animals and its role is basically to function as an oxygen storage unit. So what this means is it provides oxygen to its working muscles. I don't want to get too much into this, but converting nitrates into, a, uh, into nitric oxide is a good thing. Cure number one is used on anything under four weeks of curing process. It also requires refrigeration and a cooking process. Cure number two, on the other hand, is a little different as well. It's uh, sort of like your fermented salamis and everything, anything that requires over four weeks of curing or cold smoking in that sense too. So nitric oxide improves our cardiac health, enhances our performance during exercise. It even it, it speeds up the healing process. It can even help out with erectile dysfunction. What else contains nitrates? Well, lots of things, even vegetables, believe it or not. Those green leafy vegetables that you see like spinach and kale, even avocado, celery, beetroots, these all contain nitrates in it. So why not just use vegetables to cure our meats? Well, the main reason is we just don't know how much nitrates are added into it. So our soil has different nutrient levels. So if you're growing something in California, if you're growing something in Ontario, it's not going to be the same vegetable. So you're going to have different levels of nitrates here and different level of nitrates over there. The same can be said about potassium nitrate. This is also known as saltpeter. Saltpeter was used for thousands of years to cure meat. I believe it was the Romans who actually discovered that by using saltpeter, the meat would retain its color. And the Romans learned how to cure meats from the Greeks, but this went on thousands of years before this. And during the curing process, what they discovered was by adding smoke in, it would give it a little bit more flavor, it would give it a layer of protection, and also keep the flies off. My family used to produce lots of meat, fresh, uh, fresh sausages, salamis, uh, prosciuttos, uh, you name it, we pretty much did it. And as I was growing up, I had lots of questions as well as curing processes. I remember asking my father one day, so how much salt are you adding to this? Or how much meat is in here? And he's like, oh, this much. So I'm like, okay, but how, how do you know how much salt? He's like, well, you take so much salt and put it in here and put it like that. So I, for me, it's just I never understood it, like blew my mind. So it's I'm glad we have some type of scale right now to these days so we can basically understand of the, the whole uh, weight reduction, how much salts to put in, or in this case, nitrates, and what's the benefits of everything. I never did get a straight answer from my father of how much salt was used or or anything of that nature. I was a young guy, right? But I can tell you that we use lots of wine, we use lots of garlic, we use lots of salt. We are looking for that protein extraction as well. This is um, like the mixing process of uh, of everything. We'd also butcher our own animals. Uh, we would process it as well the same day. There's just so many different factors that uh, we would have to take into consideration. Now, if you don't know where your hog is coming from or how it's been raised, its diet, its process, these are something you may want to consider as well, why we use nitrates and nitrites as well. So let's talk about some of the nasty stuff like botulism, right? That's some pretty serious stuff. 
botulism toxins are basically in, uh, ingested through improperly processed foods. And the bacteria or the spores multiply, which means that the bacteria grows and it'll make us sick. But this toxin is actually used in Botox. Wait, what? Back that up? Yes, Botox. And Botox is used to basically smooth out wrinkles, right? Uh, actually, this, this, uh, this toxin is also used to relieve migraines too. All right, what I also want to talk to you about is something called nitrosamines. What nitrosamines are is basically it's cancer causing, right? And how that applies to sausage making is basically our nitrites and nitrites, right? Our cure number one, cure number two. So when they fully don't break down into a gas, not nitric oxide, then basically the nitrosamines attach to the lining of our gut and cause some serious health issues for us. So we're going to try to prevent that. So this is where I'm going to go further into my video and show you and explain to you how to properly use the nitrates and the nitrites. I want to talk about how to properly use the nitrites. So I'm going to give you a mathematical equation, but uh, there's some things that you will have to know to plug them in. Uh, what I am using is normally um, Prag powder number one for most of my curing process. And uh, the one that I have is 6.4%. I know a lot of Prag powders out there or another cure number ones out there are 6.25%. Uh, you can easily use this equation for both of them. I'm going to give you two examples for it as well. Okay, so for that mathematical equation of how I determine how much uh, parts per million I'm adding towards my meat, I did write everything down. I'm going to give it to you as well. Uh, so the grams of cure mix multiplied by the percentage of the nitrates in your mix uh, multiplied by a million divided by a green weight of your meat. So what this means, for example, number one, the prag powder, number one that I use is 6.4%. So I'm going to give this example plus another example as well. So... 2.4 grams, this is the grams of cure mix, right? That's a, inside your actual package. You're gonna multiply that by the percentage of your your your, your nitrite mix inside that package. So for me, it's 6.4, uh, so it's gonna be 0 0.064 times a million, and it's gonna give me 153,600. I'm gonna divide that by 1,000, which is 1,000 grams, so one kilo, and it's gonna give me 153.6 parts per million. Now, let's say example number two, you're using Instacure number one, which is 6.25% uh, nitrites. So in this case, I'm going to take, let's say uh, I have a figure of 2.49 grams that I'm going to use for my mix. Uh, multiply that by 0 0.0625, which is the percentage of the, uh, the nitrates inside that package. Uh, multiply by a million, it's going to give me 155,625. I'm then going to divide that by 1,000 grams, which is one kilogram, and it'll give me 155.6 parts per million. All right, so let's say you want to figure out how much grams per kilo of cure that you need to add to your, your, to your product, right? That's pretty uh, safe to say. So there's a little equation that I like to use as well. I like to take my parts per million. I like to multiply that by the grams of my, uh, my meat weight. From there, I will go ahead and divide it by a million and then divide it by the percentage of my nitrites. So in this case, I'm going to use 156 parts per million. I'm going to multiply it by 1,000 grams, which is one kilo. And from there, I'm going to divide it by a million and it'll give me 0.156. I'm going to divide that by uh, 0 0.064 which is my nitrate uh, percentage, and it'll give me 2.437 grams per kilo. Now, if you're using 6.25% nitrites, what uh, it's gonna happen, the same thing is, well, you're gonna take your parts per million, which is 156, you're going to multiply that by your green weight, which is 1,000 grams, divided by a million, uh, which will give you 0.156, and you're gonna divide that by 0 0.0625, which will give you 2.496 grams per kilo. So after we figure out all our calculations of how much parts per million or grams that we're going to be adding of nitrites, nitrates to our meat, what uh, you should probably be aware of is too is when you want to actually sample out your batches, right? So normally you see me making fresh sausages, right? I do lots of fresh sausages. I love my sausages, right? And I'll take a little bit of uh, my product. I'll fry it up and see if the seasoning's there, the spice level is exactly where I want it. Well, you can't really do that with this stuff, right? So by adding cure number one to it, you can't just go ahead and right away fry it up. Well, you can't, but you can. And what I mean by that is if you add a cure accelerator to it, you can fry it up pretty much uh, after a half hour, right? Let it absorb in, let it mix up a little bit. Now, the product that I like to use for my cure number one is uh, sodium erythrobate. It works well. Or if you're not going to be adding a cure accelerator, basically mix up everything 
refrigerate it for about minimum 12 hours, and then from there you can sample out your product. All right, with that being said, this does not apply to cure number two. And what I mean by that, there's no cure accelerator that's basically going to speed up the process for your, your, your curing time because the cure number two requires minimum four weeks before you can start sampling it, right? So, and that, that applies to frying it up too. So if you wanted to try out your product, your sample before you start stuffing, what I would do is basically mix up all your seasoning, get that protein extraction the way you like it, leave the cure number two out of it and go ahead and fry up a little sample. If the sample is exactly the way you'd like it, your spice level's uh, perfect, basically go ahead and start stuffing from there. If not, go ahead and readjust your spices and sample out your product again. Once you're happy, go ahead and add the cure, uh, the cure number two inside your product, mix it all up again, and go, uh, go ahead and start stuffing from there. Now, what happens is basically if you were to add the cure in and fry up and try a little sa sample, what that is is the nitrosamines that we're talking about, right? It's going to attach to the lining of your gut and cause you some serious illness, if not cancer or whatever else is out there. So we like to take all precautions as possible. So you either wait the four weeks before you sample out your product or you leave the cure out, fry up a little bit, sample it, and then add your cure in afterwards. So this is the reason why we want to add an cure accelerator or wait the time required, the 12 hours or something. So the nitrites basically break down into a gas, right? So this is the whole process and everything from the nitrates into a nitrite into nitric dioxide. And this is more beneficial for us. So if we can't convert the nitrates or the nitrites into a gas, basically this is where the food industry has a bad rap, right? Where they're saying cold cuts are causing cancer and everything. Well, and no, not really. Yes and no, right? But at the same time, if we're taking the necessary process, this is the reason why I'm making this kind of video for you guys. I know there's many videos out there as well, but uh, this is the reason, right? To convert the nitrates into nitrite, nitrite into nitric oxide. And once that gas is released, it, we're in the clear. Well, well, that was a lot of information for, for, I think, for everybody and including myself. Uh, I probably should come up with another video explaining a little bit more stuff. If you guys have any questions or from, if you're not clear about some things, uh, please leave a comment if, or correct me in that sense. Do your own research. Don't just follow somebody on the internet or take somebody else's advice. Really look into it and this way you'll be a little bit more safe as well. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I wouldn't want you to miss any of my upcoming videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Maybe I'll come up with another video at a later point. If you're not sure about some things, uh, feel free, ask away. I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.